think that's going to hit live now. Good evening, everyone. Hello, Stephanie. How are you? Hello. I'm good. What's Excellent. up? How are you? <laughs> I'm awake. I'll take that as a win for today. Hi, Yenra. <laughs> Hi, Darren. Let's give the room a little bit of time to fill up. Hi, Sean. Just and say good day, everyone. Let us know where you are in the world, what you're shooting, if you've got a shot in tonight's show. Um, and please get involved and give feedback on the shots that we have. Um, just quick little housekeeping. So today's show, is, the theme is Dramatic Light. Um, I always like to have the themes be open to interpretation and inclusive of as many different people as we can. But the theme is Dramatic Light. So if it's a dramatic shot with flat or boring light, it's not going to win. So as we look at these shots, Steph, I want our first impression to go to what is the light? Where is the light? What's the light doing? Is it a dramatic light source? Is the way it interacts with the scene making the overall scene dramatic? Or what does it do? If it's just a, like a, I don't know, I can't think of a good example, but something dramatic like a stage show, but it's not the light that's making it so, then I don't think it can really be a prize winner. It has to be about the light this week. And okay. next week I'm making the theme open topic, but I want the shot to have been shot in 2022. So you've had three and a bit months of shooting time now. So when you submit your shot for that, please make sure you include the metadata because I will be checking when the file was taken to make sure that it qualifies. Hi, Thomas Bex, Marvis Rivas. Jens, Tai Chi, Jay, Perry, 101, Leith. Hi, 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 hi. Hi, everyone. Good to see you, everyone. So, housekeeping done. Stephanie, what's new? Um, let's see. This morning, actually, uh, me and the rest of the our school dropout team, basically me, Joey, and Angela, uh, hmm. we were actually on a podcast as oh, no. guests. Please. So that was really cool. Uh, it. It's a brand new podcast, so the episodes aren't out yet. So I'll probably post it like on Discord Secret. and social media once it's out. Yeah, but it was a lot of fun, and um, yeah, I want I want to do it again. It's been a while since I've been a guest on a podcast, so uh, yeah, it's cool. It can be fun. It's um, it's weird sometimes when you on the other side of having questions asked. Even if it's things that you, like, if I'm asking you about how you guys do your productions or whatever, you know it like the back of your hand, but actually explaining it back to someone else somehow can seem to clarify it for you and kind of crystallize what the steps are that maybe you'd never even realized before. You just do it. It's actually yeah. kind of interesting that you can get And it was very difficult to explain something. So I was just like, I mean, we just do what we do. I don't really, what? <laughs> so then I had to like sit there and think about it. like, oh shoot, no, there was a full plan and everything. And, um, yeah, it was, it was fun. I liked it. And, um, nice. but yeah, that was my exciting news for this week. That was the most exciting thing that happened. Um, Great. yeah. How about you? Um, so it is Saturday morning here. We work Tuesdays to Saturdays at the moment. So that, um, that works for us. Um, today I'm heading out to film and shoot with some Sony equipment that B&H sent over for me to be able to test out. And uh, I, we just finished a video that's going up next week that's really cool. I can't wait to share it with you guys. It's got several pieces of really cool uh, equipment and we're shooting in this amazing location. One of the things, actually it ties to the first image I'm going to show here, but it's this guy. Um, my friend Jonathan found it and sent me a link saying that he thought it might be cool to take a look at and it turns out it's actually a Hong Kong company. So it's like a, well, it's a little smoke machine, but it's one that you can take on location, takes these uh, 18650 batteries that are rechargeable and it's, you know, we've shot a lot with that atmosphere in a can. Mm -hmm. It's, well, you can do different power settings and blah, 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 but it's, Basically, it's more intense smoke than that, but still not as much as one of those mains-powered studio smoke-type machines. But you can get some really cool effects. Let's um, I'll just show you a little bit here. Just below my chin, so this should just come up looking all eerie. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. There we go. 
So much drama. So much Aww. drama in the world today. It's kind of hard being Matt double something G. Yeah. That's so, really cool. How long does and, it last? Uh, depends how well ventilated the area is. So, remind me in half an hour when I've finished my coffee. The the smoke is it's actually really interesting. It settles and will last for ages if there's no ventilation. So like you can fill a bottle with smoke and then pour the smoke into a cup. So I think there's some really cool production type Ooh. possibilities of how you could use it. Um, or like get a cup, fill it with red liquid and then have the smoke kind of just dang dancing around for like a, a science-y something, I don't know. Um, yes, anyway. That so is really cool. There's lots more stuff to chat about, but let's jump in and start taking a look at some pictures because we got quite a few entries this week. The first one is from me. Now, this one oh, wow. is one of the more covered shots. Uh, we were shooting with these little uh, Luxly fiddle lights from B&H Photo. Um, that uh, multicolored LEDs. Am I showing the colors okay? That's probably not when I'm directly firing it into another light. Hey, you kind of see it. And that was using the canned atmosphere. So this is part of the LED course that's... Um, currently up on pre-sale going live in like two days i think it is um you can get it as a bundle with the jimmy the aerial artist um the how to shoot men course as well so this was three of these little panels some um, uh smoke and the cool thing about the smoke i don't know if we ever talked about this when we used it steph but if you don't have the smoke in this shot the panels of light are so piercing and um, the highlights are so bright, you just can't help but blow them out. The smoke kind of, it catches and reflects all through the smoke, so you get this really soft pastely fall off that softens out your highlights and shadows and actually allows the light to wrap around subjects better because, I don't know, I guess the particles in the air give the light things to bounce off so it can fill in better. So it's actually quite cool and fun. Um, yes, so from time to time, you might just see me go up in smoke through today's episode. <laughs> it's actually the coolest little Do you have to hold part. it? No, it's got a remote. So I just oh, I didn't bring a remote. So I was cool. thinking to sit it behind me and then whenever we get a fire entry, I could just go up in smoke, but I'm worried that I'll fill this room and then I'll forever be hazy. Um, <laughs> no, it works really well like that. And I forget what I was going to say, so I guess we'll just keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, let's take a look at get our Get the course, entrance. though, guys. Get the course. <laughs> yes, get the course. Get the course. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Adolfo Cruz. Now, it's uh, hard directional light. I, the way that you've positioned your subject, which I'm guessing maybe is a self-portrait, but I don't know if it is. Hi, Adolfo. Um, you know, it's kind of dramatic. I don't want to... Dramatic doesn't have to necessarily mean, like, shocking or, you know, doesn't have to be really... Although I think it kind of lends itself to being harder light. It doesn't have to be. Let's have a look. I'm sure we can find some examples of really soft dramatic light. Um, I think the direction of light here works well. It's yielding loads of detail through your face and beard. Um, I think the focus is kind of on the beard, just catching the eye and then the forehead's out though. So maybe I would fix that up, a, you know, move it a little bit deeper into the shot or here where you're not seeing the background anyway. There's no reason to be at f2.8. You could go to a higher f number to get your whole beautiful face in sharp focus. Um, I'll just do five or so, Steph, and then if you have any thoughts, feel free to jump in. Cool, sounds um, good. Adrian Moss. Do I think this is dramatic? It's colourful. Yeah. It's kind of theatrical. Um, I think maybe you could edit this up a little bit to get it to pop a little bit more. You know, some dehaze might do it to bring, get the, the haze out of the the non-lit areas. Um, I don't know. They're, they're, I don't feel like there's enough here. It's um, 
it's not that strong of a subject in my opinion, but um, I, what do you think that is? Is it like a bridge or is it an amusement ride? Oh, that's a great question. I didn't even think about that. Um, I think it's just a, a light structure, I think. I don't think it's an amusement ride. So that doesn't make any sense. But with all the supports, I reckon it's like the side of a bridge. Or maybe it's like holding up that pedestrian bridge or something. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah that I believe. Um, Alberto, this next one I actually used as our thumbnail. I hope you don't mind. I just had to make it a, a horizontal shot to work. But, I mean, I'm going to give this a pick straight away. This actually is really reminiscent of, not to turn everything into an ad, but of a shoot I was doing with Jimmy in the hotel where, you know, it's possible that you made this with a studio light and gobos and created that light, but it's more likely that that was a pool of really hard window light. And sometimes you can just create something spectacular if you can get your model to fit within that little pool of light. It gets rid of you know, who knows, maybe there was cables in the background or power outlets or, you know, whatever. This eliminates all of those distractions and it's just interesting. If she were just sitting there in a pool of light without the crossbars, I don't think it would be as interesting. Um, so nicely done. Um, and AC is in the room and said it is window light. Excellent. Ooh. We'll do a few more shots here, folks. So if you have any questions, please... Uh, throw them in. I promise this is THC free, so I am 100% with you guys <laughs> still. Um, it's a bit early in the morning for anything like that other than my caffeine fix. Bram Toll Camp. So this is a statue of a mouse <laughs> under a wooden block, being all cute and funny. Um, to be honest, I think most of the drama comes from the figurine rather than the light. The light direction, I think it works for the shot mostly, except I have to imagine if we could see the mouth of the little critter, um, that probably adds to the, the humor of the shot. Let's have a look. Kind of, it's also kind of weird, but um, yeah, I feel like maybe the light's even too hard. It would be nice to see kind of the face or even having the light come from the opposite direction so then we um, have the shadow behind him and we actually get the mouth lit. So I still have that up from where he had it exposed, so about there. Um, but yeah, good to see you being creative. Um, oh, and who doesn't love Burt's Bees? It's just heaven on your face. Um, I mean, it's a cool shot. What It has depth to the image. The colours just pop thanks to the treatment you've given it. Um, it's interesting and it wouldn't work nearly as well if it were shot with a soft light that didn't give the crisp shadows in the background. So nicely done and I'll give that a pick as well. Um, I need to like, uh, I'm going to just use mine. <laughs> he's so chapped. Um, let's yes. see, do we have any questions come in yet? Good morning from Hamburg. Good morning, Jens. Um, tai Chi, hi Matt and Steph, 101, saying how famous you are on all your podcasts now. Um, <laughs> oh. Lots of some interest about the smoke machine, good. I don't know if it keeps away mosquitoes, but maybe if you put the right mix of oil in here, it is a little refillable canister, so maybe you could put a little bit of that, um, oh. what, what's that? stuff that you burn the candles of that keeps mosquitoes away. It's basically just glycerin. Maybe you could put a few drops of essential oil in there too. Um, what we were talking about before off camera, Steph, that place, you know, maybe adding some smoke into some of the locations would be good. And although I don't think mosquitoes are an issue, we could camp for, we can put some camphor or something in there. Um, okay. <laughs> Um, okay, Chady Webb, I don't know much about watches, but I just found out that there are Leica watches. Have you ever checked them out? Funny you say that. It was a long development on those guys. They actually kind of announced and showed what they were going to look like, 
I think back in 2018 or 19 or something like that, when the SL2 was announced, they had materials out about it. I was in Wetzlar for that launch. Um, I don't know a whole lot about them. I think one is just time only and one has a GMT function, so you can show a tech second time zone. The finishing on them is really nice. They're manual wound mechanical watches, so no battery, but also not with the the oscillator weight in the back to self-power themselves. Um, you know, they're a lot of money, but would you expect Leica to come out with a really bargain timepiece? Um, and it depends what you compare it against. In the world of watches, there's like, you know, $100 Timexes and Casios and everything, then there's there's no limit. So I think theirs are like twelve and sixteen thousand dollars or something like that, which is an insane amount of money. But there's watches that cost ten times that amount as well. So, um, Sean Vine, do you have to worry about smoke alarms with the smoke? I haven't yet. Um, the only time I have had issues, even with like the canned aerosol, was when I didn't realize I was firing it directly at a smoke alarm. But generally, smoke alarms are actually <laughs> fire alarms. You know, they're detecting heat. Um, but I don't think so. It's mainly water vapor. So I think if you're, but if you completely filled up a room, you might, and then you might get the neighbor calling the fire department anyway. Um, oh, your bow in the chat going off like a millennial. Smash that like if you're enjoying the show. Oh, smash that like, guys. Smash that Do like. Do we even like say millennials a anymore button. or is it more like Gen Z? I feel like it's a Gen Z I think thing. there's something after that, isn't there? Anyway, let's not get into that. We're showing our age. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's um, send in any more questions you have, folks. And I'm going to throw over to Steph now with this shot from Chady Webb. Oh, I feel like, okay, so, oh man, this does feel very light. I think the rays, like the timing of it as well is actually really good. Um, light. What yeah. do you think of the light? Is the light dramatic? Is the light I, the drama of the shot? I think the light um, definitely helps, uh, I think. It gives her almost like an angelic effect of this. I don't know. She's just like epic in this moment. Um, and I have to say for it to be a, like a live performance to catch it at this time. And I, I think that the light works, even the, the harsh backlight behind her, too. Yeah. Yep. Shows are difficult. You know, it's off. It's easy to give credit yeah. to where someone has gone and crafted a light and da 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 but there's also an absolute skill set on being able to find the right moment and make shots in situations where you have no control of the light and I think uh, music performances may be the strongest example of that. Um, so yeah, I agree, I think it's pretty good. The, the foreground intrusion is a bit difficult but I, you know, I don't mm. know, maybe you would have had to be on a step ladder to get a truly clear shot yeah. here. Um, so nicely done, Chady. And I'm not on the right screen to press next. So next, ooh, <laughs> Colin Cameron. Ooh. Let's see. I mean, I would assume this is a harsh light. Um, this is one of the. It's a, uh, a bit of a Photoshop job. Yeah, with the lips, I think. Well, the lips are selective color, but look at the edge of the chin. That's kind of been poorly oh. cut out to make a perfect shadow, which that's the, really the only thing holding it back for me. If this were yeah. had been better masked, so then that wasn't a jagged line along her chin, I could even look past the selective coloring, which I personally loathe. Um, but <laughs> I do think it's a really cool effect. I think you could have a little bit more light on the hat, however. Um, let's just do it really quick and nasty just to show there is the hat there. Um, so if you got a little bit of the hat, just you know to show the texture of the hat coming through the shot, I think that works well, but it's just this 
line around the chin looks a little bit MS Painty. But in terms of what the light is doing, I think it's got to get a, I don't know, a star or some kind of a recognition yeah. <laughs> for the light is the source of the drama in this shot. Um, plus selective colouring, plus masking. Mm -hmm. Any more thoughts, Steph, Steph, Steph? No, it's good. Okay. Thanks. Ooh, Daniel Fluger. And is this guy like uh, Sons of Anarchy or Walking Dead or uh, Burying the Dead or whatever? He's a beefcake. It looks very yeah, cinematic. Yeah, something like that. Yes, I I love the cinematic feel of this. Um, also, so far, I love that we have more entries of men. Just saying. Okay. Because I know you only got through like a few, but yeah. Um, I like the expression. I think the red light works well. Um, actually, yeah, I really like the lighting in this. It feels like it could be a screen grab from like a sci-fi mm -hmm. horror film type of thing. Um, pick. I was going to pick it if you didn't. And done at a perfect time of day where you've got that nice natural colour in the sky. I think this is really nice. The only thing would be, uh, given that he, the, you know, the direction of the light is coming from his rear side, you might want to have the far eye be the one that's most perfectly in focus rather than the closest because we can barely see the closest one. Very nice. Uh, let's get another one here for Stephanie. Uh, Darren Melrose. Well, the pose is wild. Um, in terms of lighting, I feel like it's... I don't know if it's dramatic, per se. I just feel like she was just really well lit. Um, this is just so creepy. The more I look at it, I'm like getting spider vibes from it. Totally uh, right. Just thinking about Jesus. the lighting here. Um, here's a fun little exercise for people at home and for us. How many lights do you think were used and where are they? That's a great question. So I don't want to put you on the spot, I want to Steph, say... The... Oh, well, if you want to answer, go for it. Oh, I'm just going to guess. Um, I'm going to say that there is one light on the left side that is a little bit stronger, but then there's also another light on the right that's not as strong. Um, I don't know height-wise, though. I think the one on the left is maybe higher, and then the one on the right is lower. So, uh, yeah, what that's say, my guess. Is... <laughs> very nice. Very well done. When you're shooting, uh, let's just think of her as a sculpture right now, and you're thinking where you want light and shadow. At first, it's just kind of softly lit and the uh, crisscross of shadows on the ground may not seem ideal. But then as we go in closer, the positioning of the highlights on her face, the highlights and shadows across her body do give form to her. Um, and on the legs, casting the shadows in these places, you know, she was moving, I'm sure, so it's not that easy to light her as if she were just a sculpture. I think the light is actually really nicely um, crafted on her. So congratulations and well done, Darren. I'm not sure if it's dramatic. I think the drama is coming from the pose. And I agree. I think it's well lit, though. Yeah. Um, if you're well, in the room, crazy. Darren, tell us all your secrets. Um, David Rees. And the boats. What do you think of the boats, oh. Steph? Um, I like that you did highlight, I guess, I guess, have a photo of, like, all of the boats. I think it's very interesting just to see it black and white and the, the lights kind of bouncing off of the water. I don't know if this is dramatic light that you yourself have crafted. Well, no, it doesn't have to um, be, though. But, yeah, um, but I don't know. I'm not sure. I like it, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this one. Hmm. Okay, sorry, I got distracted. I got to 
Yeah. Another thing going on at the moment. Um, Dennis DeMart. <laughs> oh, what has gone on here with uh, this? Is that a composite? The, well, I don't know, but something has definitely the, oh, okay. So, first of all, it's not level, and I hate being that is it level guy. But like I said on the previous mm -hmm. one, the masking on this is just really shoddy. Sorry, Dennis. Beautiful scene. I think you were trying to really enrich in the, the golden colors. But just look at this transition. And then this mountain has been made really green and how the transition is. And this mountain has been desaturated, but not well. Look at the, the haloing from the selection. Um, I'm not a Photoshop expert, but I'll say any kind of editing these days, basically the, how well your job is going to end up depends on how good you are at masking. And even on the wide shot on this, it's, I'm sorry to be so direct and harsh, but it's really poorly masked. Beautiful shot, but I think it's been let down by the edit. And let me just uh, switch to full screen real quick and... Uh, make a quick announcement. Oh, wait, let me just add some drama. Oh, um, oh gosh. <laughs> all the buildings in Hong Kong get uh, regular renovations here. Like every 10 years, they change all the pipes and redo the exterior and blah, blah, blah to make sure they're all up to code. Our building's been going through it for like six months now and they're around my apartment right now. So if you hear some bumping, drilling, this and that, I apologize. We try and schedule this to be at the least noisy time, but I'm starting to hear debris fall from whatever they're doing upstairs. So if you guys are hearing some clunk, clunk, clunk in the background, I really apologize. And you don't want to hear what it's like the rest of the week. There's freaking jackhammers and everything whilst we're trying to film. It's, it's not that much fun. Um, okay, deep breath, Maddie. Don't breathe in the atmosphere, Haze, though. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Um, now let's. That thing is so cool, though. <laughs> and I've got a whole kit, so the the this is not. I'm not being paid to promote this or anything, but I just really think it's fun. Um, I you'll see in the upcoming video that's going live on Tuesday, I think it'll be that we use this one, but it's not the feature. But I'm going to do a dedicated video on using that guy, um, just because it's got all these different attachments and ways you can use it and. The first time we took it out on set was for this portrait shoot and trying to figure out should we use the this diffuser or that or the fan or the this or the that was just a little bit haphazard. So we want to actually test it out in a bunch of situations and see what gives thick, dense fog, what gives streaming fog, that kind of thing. So we know how to use it more thoroughly when I finally convince you to uh, do this concept with me, Steph, so then we can use it nice and clean. <laughs> Mm. Okay, let's jump back in and look at some more picky pics. Send in your questions, folks. Um, Carsten Larson. Um, I don't know whose turn it is. Ooh. I'll go first. I mean, okay. nice, simple, found light source. It is the light that's adding drama. I think her angular face and square look on to the shot also help. I think in terms of just refining the overall picture, then you could uh, remove some of the headroom, maybe bring it a little down on her bust. But in terms of the actual light pattern that's being created, I think it's simple but really effective, and it would work really well as a black and white as well. Let me just have a little look at that. Let's quickly mattify it and turn her into some kind of Blade Runner character. Now, something like that. Ooh, I'm going to give that a pick. Nice work, Carsten, but I'll undo my edit so that when we get back to the judging, we're not looking at my edit. Nice. Um, Eric Ziljat, this is a flower. There are many like it, but this is Eric's flower. Um, 
So it's basically hard light that then you've used selective focus to soften the background out and give us that flower in sharp focus. Um, what the hard light is doing is giving us really high contrast in the background, which actually gives you a crunchier bokeh because you've got a lot of contrast back there. Um, I don't really find drama from it, to be honest. I think it's an unusual uh, way to shoot this kind of a flower, but given that the flower is mostly white, you know, when you're shooting flowers, if you have uh, diffuse light, you tend to get more saturation, whereas hard light less. But here, that's not really an issue with what this subject is. Um, so one, I don't really get dramatic vibes from it, but two, I don't like the full central composition of the flower just boop, smack bang in the middle of the image personally. Um, oh, I, this, I don't know if this is rude to say, but on first glance, I thought that was Johanna in this shot from Greg. Um, oh. <laughs> so if you're doing this as a magazine cover, then I understand all of the headroom, leaving room for the banner and stuff, but otherwise it's just a overall portrait, I would bring it down to a 4x5. Um, I'll be honest, there's a couple of others in the competition as well. I don't feel that it's a lighting shot when it's been achieved by dodge and burn in edit. The edges of the newspaper and stuff have clearly been retained using a brush and the back of the newspaper has been darkened down and the background has been darkened down. That's not lighting, that's editing. So the whole shot actually has all of that detail and it's just kind of been dodged and burned to bring it down to being a, a more contrasty shot. So I know, you know, you can talk about light is exposure, so the final image is the final image, but I'm sure as photographers, we can all agree there's a difference to working with the light in the shot or manipulating how it looks in the editing process. Um, IW Dramatic Light. Do you want to talk on this one, Steph? This looks like a, your rave generation, you whippersnappers. Okay I, okay, I like clubbing. I don't do raves. See, raves don't make I sense I don't even me. know what those words really mean. Go! <laughs> um... Uh, I personally personally am not a big fan of the framing. Um, I think the smoke and the lighting is kind of cool, but I feel like whatever, it looks like there was like some words on the front panel that's kind of like lost. Um, this one I feel like is just not as strong of an image in terms of like a live performance um, and lighting. I'm going to give two suggestions. It feels more of a... Crap shot. And it's a, um, it's kind of the opposite of what I just said about the newspaper shot. Um, first of all, it is an extremely contrasty frame. The brights in that dork or whatever was written on the board, and then the shadows is a huge <laughs> contrast. But one, I understand why you included the scaffolding. It gives a sense of the scene, but I think it's going to be a stronger scene without it. If you brought it right in on him and the audience, I think that's already more powerful than if you got a, just to do it in a simple way, a linear gradient and bring it up on the crowd. Oop, what am I doing? Um, so then we see some of the crowd down there in the foreground. How? Um, although if it's an empty audience, that doesn't work as well. But they're just bringing up the crowd a little bit I think that actually works a lot better to see the crowd and the guy rather than black space at the bottom, black space and scaffolding at the top. So that's my quick little edit on it. And here's how we got the shot. So just the thought. I have to say though, in terms of the light, I do think the backlighting with the blue light and the fog and then that his shadow being cast up into it that central little bit of the scene on the DJ, I do think is adding great drama. I just think the, you know, where the rest of the scene is a bit 
broad and not giving much extra info. Stephanie Jensmeyer, look at that. That looks like, Hello. I'm going to say, Ooh. Norway. Is that Norway, Jens? Are you here? Please tell me I'm right because I need that early on a Saturday morning. I need a win. So, sorry, my, my first thought was like, wow, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Could be um, New Zealand. I've not been. Uh, it's just the, the light looks kind of like the eye of Sauron a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah, it's totally. Kind of I see like that. Sauron-y. Yeah. So Sauron-y right now. Yeah. Um, I like this. I feel like it... Uh, I feel like we can move the... I don't know. There's something about the crop. Like, take it in from the right and the top. I think it's just too much darkness up top. Um, but I think that the light works... At first, I was like, is this even real? But, um, yeah. I like this. I, I'm going to... Wallpaper. Devil's Advocate. I actually quite like the, the, the framing. It is a lot of negative space, but um, the little highlight on the water brings that to, you know, brings that alive. The strong edge on the second mountain brings that alive. Maybe you could bring it in a little from the top, but... You know, when you're in that part of the world, the weather just, the clouds can be this dramatic to your eye. I don't feel like this is over the top, to be honest. Nice one, Jens. It's crazy. I'm going to give it a pick. Um, John Dalston, Steph, are you scared? Yes. Um, there's like never any warning whenever we go through these images. Oh. Like, hey, the next image, you might get... You know, you um, I advised. think, I think, um, the earlier image, I think with like Colin, where it was like a lot of the, I guess the editing in terms of just making it dark. This one, I think in terms of kind of like comparing the two, this one does it well. It looks like because the lighting is more top down, it's, I mean, it, it just makes it look very creepy mm -hmm. and sinister and like i i think it just works really well conceptually mm. um yeah i say pick nicely done um yeah when you're choosing what lighting like if you're going for a creepy vibe or a whatever vibe a sinister vibe you know you still do need to keep in mind the shape of the subject's face, the angle of their face, the size of the light source, all of that stuff. This top-down lighting may not work at all for Steph because not having a pronounced, mm -hmm. as pronounced of a brow yeah. it may not look as scary on her. You know, strong side lighting or below lighting may be where you're going to get the result and it'll be different on me. So you do need to experiment. But I feel the, yeah, the eye contact in this one overall is really good. The only thing that I think would make it even creepier would be if we weren't getting the top of her head really well exposed. I think that, mm. you know, having the brightest part of the shot be the dim part of, well, basically her forehead, it would be in this case, I think works even better. Nice one. Um, we'll look at two more shots, then come back and look at your questions, folks. So get them in. And then here's John Sullivan with a very, very... Oh. kind of similar but different take on it it looks to me like the yeah. forehead has been darkened down the shoulder is still bright but yeah it looks like some parts of the face have been darkened down and the clarity reduced on this there's kind of a telltale mushiness to the shadows and hair that correct me if i'm wrong john but that's how it's looking to me um what do you think of the shot first steph well, this one, unlike the other one, is not creepy. I feel like this one's just kind of, like, more soft. Um, I think the lighting, uh, I feel like if it was a little bit more, I guess, angled towards the front of her a little bit, because it's very dark on, like, this area, air, I can't even talk today, uh, area uh, of her face. Yeah. Um and like it's just very bright on like the bridge of her nose right here, mm. um, but I'm not really getting dramatic shit. vibes to be honest. Oh no, it's just a yeah. I agree. Okay, 
Um, jumping back for some questions. Um, Marv's asked, what are we using uh, to edit? Mac Studio. I'm not on the studio, but Steph, what do you guys use? Uh, Premiere. But what kind of computer system? Oh, PC. Mm -hmm. I don't know any other details than that. <laughs> do you guys see the smoke behind me? I'm getting so dramatic right now. Oh, check oh me out. Oh my gosh. What? You're... I don't... I don't have anything to play with. <laughs> I mean, it's just... I'm a child. Um, I consider the studio, it's a funny story, and if he's watching, hi, I won't give away names, but a member of the audience who I've met a few times and I would be happy to call a friend, I hope he doesn't mind, bought my Mac Pro trash can years ago um, when I was considering buying the cheese grater. And when the studio was announced, he actually wrote to me saying, hey, if you want to sell your cheese grater, I'm in the market. Maybe you want to upgrade to the studio next. Um, it's just depressing to think that something's so much smaller and so much. Have you followed the studio, Steph? You know what it is? What? Sorry, I was trying to, I was playing with my own life. <laughs> so you know how giant my editing computer is now. It's like the full Mac desktop -y type thing. We put it on a skateboard yeah. one time. Um, they've announced a new one called a studio that's basically like the size of a Mac Mini, but fatter and, you know, potentially is way faster than this one. And it's still expensive, but it tops out at like, I think, $8,000, whereas this one topped out at like 50000 if you got all the options. So... You know, it's meant to be much faster for exporting, but long story, no, I'm, don't, I'm not in a rush to get one, mainly because of things like today's show. I have added cards like a Blackmagic 4 port for 4K HDMI ingest card, and something like the studio just doesn't have a port for that. So I would then, for any cards, I guess, need to connect them to external housings in via Thunderbolt 3 or 4 or something. So... Um, and being in studio, it being under my desk doesn't really mean anything. The other thing, only thing is it does get hot, but it's completely silent. And my exports are so quick anyway, halving that time isn't really going to add much to my efficiency. But just wait, maybe in six months when I do a video, I'll be raving about the faster export times and why I just absolutely had to upgrade. You know me. Yes, you do. Okay, now I have some more questions coming through here. Um, how do you like the system you're using? I like it a lot. I've done a video on it in the past about what my spec is. It's going great. And my videographer is using the latest MacBook Pro with the M1 chip as well. Uh, Jens Meyer's shot was a journey at the polar circle in Swedish Lapland on the Norwegian border. So close to Norway. So close. Cool. Uh, thank you for throwing in that little tidbit so I feel slightly right. The shot was made on a snowy day <laughs> with really dark clouds. As I said early, I exposed it to the sun. Yep, makes sense. And I see it. AIC, where can I get the smoke machine? I actually don't know if they're selling online. When I have searched before, it seemed like they only um, link out to distributors. So um, if you don't mind, Steph. What? Uh, I know. Well, I... Just, I just grabbed it as I was walking to the thing. I wasn't really thinking about, oh, I should bring this into people's lives. Um, let's have a look at the next image. And whilst you do that, I'm going to quickly search for this device and see if it is available somewhere. So, Steph, oh, okay, because I was going to ask you to drop a link. I will if I find one. Okay. Okay. Um, I feel like with this, it's not very dramatic i think it's just actually well lit um maybe a little bit darker on her like left side but that could also be due to like the angling of like her face um in comparison to the light it's eye basic, contact is great it's basically um uh rembrandt lighting mm. um but i i don't really get dramatic light from this shot um 
kind if she were looking straight it. onto camera, then it would be classic Rembrandt lighting. The fact that her chin is tilted slightly camera right makes more of that side of her face in shadow, which makes it maybe, you know, more dramatic or mysterious having half the face in shadow just catching the eye. Um, but yeah, I agree, the light isn't really making it a dramatic shot, I don't think. Um, oh, so apparently, you're a nerd, Steph, you like this. Adam, you know Adam Savage? Dave sounds very He's familiar. From Mythbusters. The light haired guy. Oh, okay, yeah. So he used one of these smoke machines in his 2021 Ghostbusters New York Comic Con costume. <gasps> oh my god, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Okay, yeah, that would so be a great. I'm finding them on Kickstarter, but I haven't found them like where you can actually buy them now. People, if you ever run a Kickstarter, I got lucky and did this by chance. As the before the Kickstarter ends, make sure you update your page like in the last few minutes with a link of where they're going to be able to get it after the Kickstarter is finished. Because after the project is funded and the time runs out, you can no longer edit your page at all. So going back to this, now there's no link to their company webpage to find it and buy one now six months after the fact that it's you know gone live. So if you ever do a Kickstarter, do that. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing how an actual place to buy these things. I can find... What? I'm all pissy. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I'm finding. You know, cranky. I am also, like, the audience here. I would assume that everyone... I'm, I mean, let me know if I'm wrong. I'm, but you guys are also like, What? I want that, and now you're telling me that you can't find it, and like... And I'm, because Kate's up the hallway listening to this, I'm hearing your what again a second time, you know, three <laughs> seconds later. <laughs> what? Stop it. Okay, um, in USA, I can just find the distributors, not the actual sale page. Yeah, this is a bit weak. What is it called? I always dislike that as well when they like link you to a company's website to find their product, but then it just links you to that other company's homepage, not to the product page. Anyway, uh, let me just, I'll link to the main company page and then people can go from there. So it's called the Smoke Genie and it's made by PMI Gear. There you go. Anyway, uh, so Kev Drury, we're back to photos. Um, Kevin Connery. Um, so certainly a lot of drama in the shot. This is another one though where I think it's had the masking done to just black out the background, which isn't you know a terrible thing, but you can see there's this strong halo around her where all of the black back all of the background that was probably messy has just been removed um which is not the end of the world the light on her doesn't look like it's been tampered with too much um i'm not sure there's certainly lots of drama this kind of looks like it may be seppuku or something about to happen with her exposed stomach and that short katana sword um, yeah, I'd like to know more about what the concept was here, Kevin. And what do you think of this, Steph? I, I, my first thought was, I really hope that blade isn't sharp. Guys, when you have <sighs> weapons on set, please make sure that they're not sharp, oh, that they're dull. She's so boring to work with. She's dull like <laughs> her swords. Live a little. Yes. Just cut a little. It's all part of the fun. <laughs> Okay. Oh my Any god. Any other thoughts, Steph? Whilst I just hotbox myself? No, that's, that's it. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's on the low setting, by the way. Let's see. We can put the smoke what? up higher. So it's got amount of smoke and oh, that's the higher setting. Uh, the amount of smoke and Whoa. the speed of the fan you can adjust. 
pretty cool, huh? Okay, I'll stop. Uh, <coughs> Lay Stevens bringing the fire. See, smoke, fire. Um, ooh, super crunchy, crispy outline on the rocks. I guess there's been a separate treatment. So this might be the first one that Lathe has entered that has such an obvious halo around all of the foreground. What's going on there, mate? I guess just dropping the exposure back on the sky or trying to bring up the rocks. That, yeah, that's, that's non-characteristic lathe. I don't expect to see that kind of uh, haloing from your shots. Um, beautiful landscape though. Um, nice framing of the sun uh, right in amongst the, you know, the opening of the inlet there. Um, again, I think you could probably bring the top down a little bit. What do you think of this one, Stephanie? I like the division with like the central rock in the middle, and then it's just the three points going towards the, the sun. Um, yeah, I feel like it's, it's pretty epic. Prepic. 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 Pretty epic. <laughs> What? you got to coin new words. I'm going gonna... I'm gonna to put that on a t-shirt. My mom thinks I'm prepping. Um, Mark Saiwan. Unfortunately, this is a low-res file. And I think it was not high-quality low-res file. Um, can we see any info of what this was shot with? No. I'm guessing a cell phone, though. Um, the light is pretty in the way that it's interacting with the um, the low-lying fog but yeah I'm sorry I can't really give feedback on it it's just all soft and out of looks out of focus because it's so low res on this one sorry I'd love to see a high res and we do have instructions on the page of what res to upload for next time ooh marvelous oh that's dramatic for other reasons. I can almost hear the screeching tires. Um, <laughs> if it's going for a, well, it's not though. See, okay, gosh, on first account, I saw a little girl running in front of a car and I thought that red was her dress. And now I see it's a model oh. kneeling, doing a hair toss with the car, which, doesn't work nearly as well, in my opinion. Well, I <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to make sense of. Um, what do you think, Steph? Uh, not a big fan of the kneeling and hair tossing. Um, We're focusing first on but life. You I know your priorities yes, always yes. to the model. But but using the headlights of a car is actually really smart. Um, I think it's great utility of what resources you have available. Uh, I know for like our production, like our school dropouts, like we've actually done this before because we don't have strong enough lights. So we like to use car lights. Um, and I guess like the haziness, maybe it's from like the dirt or like the fog. I think that it works really well. Um, I feel like the model isn't really like necessary in this shot. Maybe it needs to be framed better to kind of like, I don't know. It's difficult because with the- There's something potential here. Yeah, definitely. But <laughs> with the potential. two lights, I think maybe having her further from the car and centered might work better so you get her feet, the exposure up. But it's having the two light sources. So if she's like over one of them, so then we get a nice edge light around her. The second one is still kind of washing out the scene, but I agree, there's definitely potential there. Um, and that's it. That's all of our shots, is that right? What? No. I must have done, we have I must have only selected, oh no, we've got a bunch left. So why is my shot in yes. there twice? That's weird. Did you get my shot twice? I just saw my shot no. and then thought, oh, we must be finished. Um, Nope. Okay, Peter and a very similar shot to the first or second one we had of the day. Here, I think the edge lighting is working better. And this is uh, 
kind of, it's been lit from the far side, but this is again a kind of um, Rembrandt lighting. But here I think it works really well and the kind of the reflective look as well. Um, yeah, a similar feedback to the first one, but I think this one's even better done. Any extra thoughts, Stephanie? No, I agree. Lovely. Um, I like the, I like the edge agree. lighting. <laughs> um, okay. So let's see, can I do it? Well, after a few more shots, I'm going to show you a couple more cool things with the smoke machine. I just had some suggestions <laughs> come in. Richard Nugent, that looks like, and from memory in the email you mentioned, Havana. Um, the, you know, the rising sun early morning before the heat engulfs the city and drives you under a fan. It's a spectacular time of day. I think there's amazing shots in this location at this time of day, but I think you could have got found a better angle than this. If you got their whole leading shadow, like getting lower to the ground would be great. Um, yeah, I don't think the where the different ele where the different subjects in the frame are working best. And I don't think this is the best angle on it, but this is definitely great light and offers great potential for these kind of shots. Ooh, Ron Williams, what do you think of this, Steph? Oh, um, pick. <laughs> the end. Should I just move on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so cool window light, you see the way that it's hitting the ground versus the way it's hitting the different angles on the sofa. That does actually provide us with information about the shape and form of the subject. So I love this kind of restricted lighting. Um, and the plate falling, whether it's composite or not, or whether you had a, a crash mat underneath, I think it's a, yeah, great shot. Sean Vine, Dramatic Light. Uh, did we do something like this together, Steph, in Arizona or something? Uh, I think so, yeah. Um, it is difficult to get a shot of the balloon being filled up. Um, it's kind of tricky because when you get the wide shot at this time of day, it looks like it was probably too dark to be getting any scene around it to get the context. But the way the balloon glows as the fire starts to fill up is pretty cool. Um, I think it, again, it has potential, maybe try some different shutter speeds, try some that are a little bit wider to get the whole balloon and then the context of just this little fire uh, filling up this vast thing could work really well. Let me move this lens. Ugh, my shoulder's so shitty at the moment. Um, wow. Cincha. I just realized your shot is 256 pixels. Looks like a cool shot, but I really can't oh. give it feedback, unfortunately. That looks uh, like it would have been a good one. Looks yeah. like it's got some gels and stuff going on, but that's, um, that's an avatar. Very small. Thomas Beck's pick. Oh. So, I want to go to Karanjwi Indaluvu River Lodge wonder where that is. Private game reserve, maybe South Africa, Namibia, somewhere like that. Oh, and they've got nice um, gimbals for your long lenses. Great shot, you know, out in the middle of nowhere with the, the Milky Way or the, you know, the, the fantastic sky flashing in your guides. Oh, what's not to love? Beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we have... Four more images. What do you think of this one from Tomei's Frerere's? Stephanie. Ooh. Where is this? That's pretty. I think that the the rising or setting sun, I can't even tell, is really nice on the buildings. And the structures are very unique as well. Um, I don't know if the right side is doing much for me, honestly. Exactly what I was thinking. Uh, what if we brought it in so the bridge is the edge of the shot? and kind of I into think... something like that. Uh, I think that that would be much better. Um, or maybe going a little bit further across your bridge, see what light you could get if you opened up, you know, if you were halfway across the canal. Um, 
Beautiful time of day, though. Beautiful place. What is that? Mm. Germany, France. Looks like somewhere that I wish I was traveling and eating a schnitzel or something. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a nice one, though. And uh, I don't know if it's really dramatic, but certainly the, the lighting is beautiful and making the shot work. Um, tai Chi. There we go. Um, oh making use of similar lighting to that cup that was being dropped, getting nice um, light in the eyes. And again, to Steph's point, great to see more men being featured on the channel. Yes, um, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I like it. His pose is good. The only thing would be some of the highlights are blown out in his shirt, but I think it works really well. Anything else you want to add, Steph? Um... I think it's great. Um, I would like to have seen more definition in terms of the shadows. And I feel like his left eye, uh, I don't know. There was like, yeah, just a bit too much. Unless that's his natural eyes. And I, no, I'm I don't know. I'm pretty sure but... that has been lifted because the eye is brighter, even though that side of the face is in less light than the other side. So, yeah, maybe just be aware of that. It kind of looks like a fake eyeball. Yeah. Nice. Uh, actually, I'm giving that a pick. That is dramatic lighting and the shot is working due to it. And so is this one. Nice, Wolfgang. Pick. Um, oh. Simple little pool of light. It, you know, exposing for the highlights, letting the background fall away. Um, at first I thought, what is she doing? Like some kind of complex differential uh, equations. But it looks like she's drawing on a piece of kitchen towel. I wonder what she was actually Yeah. <laughs> if you're here, Wolfgang, let us know. Um, and lucky last, before I do a cool little smoke demo. Um, oh, and it involves <laughs> cups, like mine. Uh, what do you think of Yenra? This reminds me of that night by the pool in Vegas, Steph. That was very, very cold, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, I think using candlelight is really fun and... Do we have any other entries using candlelight? Mm, not that I recall, yeah. no. Um, but yeah, I think that this shot works well. I think maybe too much headspace unless, I mean, but then again, you were probably trying to keep the, uh, the little bulky balls in the back. Okay. Um, but I like it. The zooming in on her face, though, like the candlelight looks nice on her. I feel like... For some reason, we are losing some definition in her face because, like, her no bridge nose, like, the nose, her the bridge of her nose, nose it just nose, kind of, like, blends nose. right in. <laughs> yeah. I can't talk. But it's nice. Well, that's high All right, I'm done. <laughs> um, the only thing I think maybe you could, if you had gotten down a little lower, you could have the candle positioned up here. Bring the bouquet closer down to her face, which would then allow you to crop it in more if that bouquet was lower, imagine, in the frame. That would let you have her be a more dominant part of the frame, which kind of impacts the overall exposure. But nice one. Excellent. Now, I'm going to switch back to the full screen. I apologize, Steph. You've been squeezed into a corner because I want to do a little demonstration. And again... It's fine. I'm not on the payroll for this company or anything like that, but your guys' reaction has been good, so I'm just going to show you. First of all, if you're ever shooting video of cocktails or photos of drinks, oh my God, is this going to be a magic put trick? a flashlight, your phone flashlight, underneath it, and it really brings the drink to life. Then on power on this guy, I'm going to put the smoke power to medium, but the fan power to low, and... Hopefully the exposure is going to work here if I put it near my face and the focus. Then we're going to fill this cup up with smoke. And it does just kind of mostly stay in there. So there is a full cup of smoke. Now if I put it in front of my face, is that going to take the focus? Or oh, it's too bright now. But I don't know if you're really getting it. Whoa. But the... Yeah, it's too bright. Sorry, guys. We'll get great footage of it when I do the actual video. But then as you disperse the smoke, 
the way you probably can't see it coming through there on YouTube, but the way the smoke is moving around in the glass is really cool. And you can actually, like I said, if you have a bottle, then just pour the smoke out and put it exactly where you want it, which is kind of fun. So the end. Okay, yeah, that's cool. I'm a nerd, and I've probably just inhaled more glycerin than is recommended as your daily glycerin intake, but there you go. So watch our upcoming video. It's a side note in that video, but I think it's still going to be a fun one. So... Uh -huh. Um, 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 um. I want to play with that. <laughs> well, when I see you next, I'll bring it. As long as I might need okay. to buy the glycerin there. I don't know that they want me traveling with a smoke machine in my luggage. Oh. Not sure. True. It's only glycerin, so it should be okay. Um, anyway, let's now fix up our shots so you're back to full size. And let's have a look at our pics. What did you guys think of the images? Did you have any favorites? Let me just check if I missed any questions. Uh, Kevin. And thanks for submitting this week, guys. These are really awesome shots, actually. Yes. Um, and Kevin replied that, yes, that was a, an edged weapon, but she's familiar with knives, the model. So there you go. Oh, okay. That's fine, then. Um, okay. So I'm not seeing other questions. Let's... Take a look, I can see a guy right outside my window. The house is covered in like the scaffolding that's made of bamboo that's so famous in this part of the world. Um, please don't fall, but also please don't be noisy. Okay, we better probably get moving though so that they're not too noisy. Okay. Um, so I'm not covering up some of the shots. Let's just squish this a little bit. Okay, so here were our picks. We have... Alberto, Caleb, Daniel, Carsten, Jens, John, Ron, Thomas, Tai Chi, Wolfgang. Dun dun dun. dun. There's a lot there, and to be honest, I'd be happy if we'd only had one of them enter, I'd be happy for any of them to be the winner. So, really great work, guys. Um, I have mine down to four. Let's choose one each, Steph. Um, okay. It's kind of like ordering with your spouse at a restaurant. I always like narrow what I want <laughs> down to like four dishes and then depending on what they order, I'll choose the second one to complement it. But I don't want to like commit to one until I know what... Well, I don't want us both to have steak. So tell me, are you getting the fish or the pasta or what? Yeah. <laughs> um, I think so. All of these qualify. The light is what's making them great. Then now judging the best shot, it's going to be either that the, the light is just the most dramatic or that it's the best overall image in total. Um, okay. Okay. I, I think I have mine. Oh, it's hard. Yeah. I keep oscillating. What's yours, Steph? Ron Williams with the, the cup. Nice choice. Okay. Yeah. And now I still feel screwed and it like forces my hand. Okay. <laughs> Nicely done, Ron. Five stars. It's one less. That's true. It's That's true. It was in my top four. Now. Okay. Focusing right in on the dramatic light aspect. Okay, the drilling has just started. That's my cue that I do need to hurry the F up. Um, so I would say uh, this isn't my winner. Don't want to like get someone's hopes up. But this is epic, but it's not really like this. The sky is due to a lack of light, and then the flash is simple off-camera flash. So whilst it's a really, really great shot. I won't choose it uh, as a winner. This one, I think, is a really cool cinematic shot. But again, I don't think the light is the most dramatic in it. Oh, they're telling me I have to hurry up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I feel like we're getting like better entries every week, oh, and it's, it's getting really very, hard. very difficult. 
Um, <sighs> it's a good thing, though, guys. It's a good thing. <laughs> this is hard for us. Yes. Look, I really could choose any of them. I... Uh, Anyways, I will stall for Matt yeah, so please. he can decide. Stall, stall. Um, so, let uh, me just like well, a, you okay, know, so in a movie guys... where they throw down the smoke bomb and disappear. You just talk. I'm just gonna disappear real <laughs> quick whilst I make my decision. If you guys had the smoke tool, what would you guys use it for? Like, what kind of shoot? It's a question for you guys. Um, and. Don't forget, next week is an open topic, but everything has, whatever shot you submit, make sure that it's shot this year. So that's January, February, March, and then I guess the first week or whatever of uh, April. Um, make sure you get the two courses that are on pre sale right now. It's 78% off. Actually, is it pre sale? I have to check. Yep, um, but it's Photographing Men. And it's the LED art nude. So check that out. Um, I'm going with Wolfgang. Ooh, Hummel. Al says he's going. <laughs> Yay! No offense to everyone and else. And Al says he's going to shoot steampunk. Nice. That's a great idea. Shooting steampunk with the, the smoke. Yeah. Great. You should check out Steph and cool. my steampunk art nude portrait tutorial as well. If you go to the April combo yeah. link, you'll be able to find that on the page there. Uh, we did use some we do smoke, use smoke in that one, but this one works even better. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. So the noise is getting worse here. Uh, let me just to show the shot that I chose. So this was the the one that I chose as our second winner. So congratulations to... Wolfgang and to Ron. I'll be in touch to get you out your prize. Thank you, Stephanie. No thank you to the construction that's kicking up. Steph already did all the plugs. <laughs> Check out the sale. The pre-order is ending in about 48 hours. Get your shots in for next week's show. And yeah, stay tuned because we've got some great content, including yeah. some on this smoky fella. Let's smash that like button. Destroy it <laughs> like it's the shutter button on your old film camera. Well, just just click it once though. Because if you click smash, it again, smash, it smash, unlikes smash. it. So just click it once. Yes. Yeah. But with certainty yeah. and force. Yes. Once. Determination. Mm. Okay. Yeah. This is weird. <laughs> Thank you, Yobo. Thank you, Steph. Thank you, everyone who joined and entered. Look forward to seeing your open theme entries next week. Mwah! We'll see you later. Bye. Bye, guys. I need to turn a fan on to get all this smoke out.